Let's talk um, in our last few minutes here about the abortion legislation we can expect to see this session. We've already heard some conversations uh, from Governor Perry about a so-called fetal pain bill that would ban, ban abortion after 20 weeks or effectively shorten the window for abortions by, by seven weeks in Texas. We've heard about a measure that would require doctors to be present to administer the two prescription drugs uh, used to induce abortions in the first seven weeks, while the FDA does say currently that the doctor only should be present for the first one of those two drugs. Um, do you think there is the motivation in this makeup of the legislature to pass measures like that? What are you expecting to see you know, from both of your parties in the coming weeks and months? Wow. Well, you know, of course, I'm extremely hopeful that uh, we won't go down that path. Um, we've had a, we have a Speaker of the House who's at least said, you know, we need to focus on the real issues facing Texans right now, which have to do with water, which have to do with in infrastructure and education. Uh, this is not an issue. This is really a non-issue. Uh, it's a solution in search of a problem. Uh, the fact is that the vast majority of, of our abortions that occur are in the first trimester. We don't, this, this is really not an issue. So when we're looking at at the kinds of things that, that look at late-term abortion, when we're looking at the kinds of things that, that diminish access to, to, to uh, a legal medical procedure, um, you know, that's certainly appealing to uh, a minority but vocal part of the electorate who have a lot of sway with our leadership. And, you know, quite frankly, I think Governor Perry has used this for political advantage. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm hopeful that uh, those of us in the legislature will be more reasoned about this, will recognize that this is not an issue that the majority of Texans want us to be focused on. We have much more serious issues to be dealing with right now. This is a legal procedure. It's between a woman and her physician. The legislature should not be practicing medicine. And while I completely agree that the legislature should not be practicing medicine, these issues win Republican offices. You had 101 supermajority last session, and I guarantee you a great uh, deal of them were campaigning on the sonogram bill because it was a question on our primary ballot. So to say that those issues are not, that are just purely political, that maybe they may be political, but they're also important to a conservative state like Texas. So I, I don't think we can ignore that. Now you brought up two possible, uh, and I, I'm not entirely sure if they've been filed, the fetal pain bill. Um, I, you know, my understanding of Roe v. Wade is, is a viability analysis. And when I have been talking to doctors, it seems viability is anywhere between 23 and 25 weeks. So I don't necessarily know that that bill is constitutional. Um, but I think we need to look at the science behind it. Um, and I would, I'd rather hear from the medical community than male legislators about it. Uh, and so I think that that is an issue that we obviously, uh, I'm sensitive to. I was recently in the Valley and uh, visiting a women's hospital and saw a baby that was born at 21 weeks. And, you know, she had 10 fingers and 10 toes and was breathing. And that had an impact on me when we're talking about what, is, what it means to be viable. Um, but I don't know necessarily that it's a constitutional under Roe v. Wade, and I don't know enough about the science to be able to say, you know, this is a bad idea or this is a good idea. Um, the other bill that's being discussed about the second, uh, the administration the of the second uh, uh, medicine, as, as I appreciate it, the, the administration of the first medication terminates the pregnancy. So missing the second dose does nothing to stop that um, pregnancy. So it seems to me, like you said, it's a, it's a, it's a solution where there's you know, no real problem. And in fact, you're probably endangering women by uh, making them return if they are, you know, live 80 miles away from the clinic and they don't go back, I think that they could actually suffer from some um, severe health ramifications. And the FDA doesn't require it. So I think that's, that is um, 
something that is really aimed at almost just shaming women. But federal oversight has never stopped Texas. Before, of course not. Obviously. Of course not. <laughs>